Hi, I'm Nav Mathur, and I'm here with Jeff from Adaptive. Adaptive is a Neo4j partner, and today we're going to be talking about data governance, data lineage, and metadata management. Uh, my name is Jeff Goins. I'm the CEO of Adaptive Inc., and we're very focused on data governance, metadata management, and how that applies on an enterprise scale with organizations around the world. Very, very much focused. Uh, first wave of that, of course, being the financial services industry that had a lot of regulatory mandates that drove the adoption of data lineage analytics and metadata management. Great, Jeff. Uh, why don't you talk to us a little bit about uh, some of the business challenges that companies are facing today in this area? Oh, absolutely. Um, we see a lot of uh, uh, a lot of instances of why this is much needed in today's industry. Uh, one key area is around compliance and regulatory reporting. Uh, the regulators in the financial services industry, for example, are mandating that organizations show the lineage, the source of where data comes from to the target of where that data resides and making sure that the data is accurate and it's being governed properly. And so many, many financial services inst institutions are required now to show end-to-end -end data lineage and data governance and make sure that they have a holistic solution on how they manage their data in the most proper and optimal manner. So one example is, as mentioned earlier, is around GDPR, which is around data privacy. It's a mandate that the European communities have um, put in place that has to be in place by April of 2018. And to be able to um, effectively do that, they have to understand the source of the data and how it is transformed, who's manipulating it, where it's located, um, and of course where it ends up. And so per that regulation, it is mandatory that they um, understand the reverse data lineage as well as the stakeholders that are involved in the process on managing and operating on that data. Reverse data lineage, that's an interesting term. Yes. What does that mean? Well, reverse data lineage is an interesting term and it's very important. And the reason it's important is because how do you know your data is right if you don't know the source of the data? And these organizations are processing so much data, um, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, the volume of data and the nature of the data that if you don't know the source, you can ensure that you have accurate data. R reverse data lineage analytics goes from the end point and we traverse all the way back to the source of the data in a systematic way. Great, so you're basically walking the data back, walking the and, data back. And, 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 and seeing how the data is changing and what processes are changing the data and convincing the regulators that yes, you're following the process as they've laid out and reporting against that. And, and one key aspect as well is who owns the data, the stewardship of the data. So it's very important to understand who in the organization is the owner of that data and who's responsible for maintaining that data so when there are problems, they, the organization understands who to go to to correct it and manage it in the most optimal manner. That's great. Uh, so how does metadata management fit into uh, GDPR and reverse data lineage? Very good question. And uh, the reason it's, it's very important is because Metadata management understands the location, structures, and movement of the data. Um, it's like when you look at an iTunes and you want to classify your mu music as R&B or country or how many times I play it or when was it last played. These are all metadata um, concepts around music. Well, think about the same premise around how organizations manage their data. Like, for example, cybersecurity. How do you tag your data on what needs to be encrypted? What's sensitive? What, how is it um, being protected in the most optimal way? The same thing around data retention. How long do you store your data from a leg legality perspective? Data privacy. How do you know what to protect and where it's located? All of these are concepts around metadata and very, very important if you're going to do this in the most proper and optimal manner. So it's a very complex web of data and to manage that you need metadata and without metadata management you really cannot move into data lineage. Right? You, you'll never have the assurance that your data is optimized and the data quality is there and the governance is in place if you do not have the metadata management capability. So what uh, technologies are you using to manage this complex web of data 
uh, this immensely connected data. It's all related in some way. Yeah, so what our secret sauce in our platform, a couple key points or capability points, one being we can harvest and parse and digest these various sources of data. And what we're very excited uh, working here um, with Neo4j is the analytics uh, aspect of what we can do with that data, connecting the, uh, the semantic layer of metadata with actual instance data, and obviously the performance um, optimization that we can do with this lineage analytics and what organizations can do with that. We have a, a, a large financial services organization headquartered in, in one part of the world um, on a global scale and is the global bank, but they have many country banks. Uh, they have many entities that fall within the family of this banking community. Each one of these country banks has their own processes and own, own way of how they go about doing business. So the ability for the parent bank to provide um, basically a roadmap and best practices and taxonomies and data dictionaries and glossaries and, and functional models that can be rolled out to the child banks allows these organizations to communicate and govern their data in a much more optimal manner. And um, so the rollout of this at this type of scale it's very important that these organizations leverage best practices and specific content that they can leverage and roll out in a systematic manner. Another key, very key aspect of that that goes hand in hand with it is organization change. There's a lot of people are leaving these organizations, the turnover rate, the knowledge that's being just walked right out of the door. This provides these organizations from a data perspective, a knowledge base that allows them to scale and reuse um, and optimize uh, performance as new people come into their organization. We need to also talk about impact analysis. I think there's a lot of system modernization going on. A lot of enterprises are moving to this brave new digital world and moving to the cloud. And uh, a lot of legacy systems are being transformed. And as they go through that transformation, it's usually a multi-million dollar project for these large enterprises. and um, you know, is there a better way to manage those projects through this metadata? Basically, these organizations are looking at the low-hanging fruit of what they need to um, get started with, and we're able to stitch those three different sources of data and apply that to the business case that's most appropriate for that organization. And it gives them a roadmap of, of getting through an instance um, of how to go about doing this, and then they can start bringing in other sources of data and other stakeholders based on, again, their criteria for performance and, and what's the most important for them to achieve. Yeah, and uh, you can model the, the metadata from the old world, from the old system, and the metadata from the new system, and then you can kind of see how you're morphing from old to new, and what, you know, what systems, what integrations, what reports does that impact, and all of, all of that is also possible through this metadata that a we have. Absolutely, right? and, absolutely. And that's, a, that's a huge uh, you know, governance mechanism. It's uh, you know, ho hopefully a lot, lot of cost saving for the organization that's going this, doing this uh, major transformation effort of their systems. Another key point I'd like uh, to make on this, and this is, this is very important, is that um, there's liability for organizations that aren't doing this properly. This, there, there's liability issues at the board level and at the executive staff level where they act actually have to put their personal um, uh, you know, adoption of this um, and responsibility on making sure that they're protecting and managing data in the most proper manner. Jeff, tell us a little bit about adaptive, uh, you know, which industry segments are you focused on? To answer your qu question, we've been around a long time doing this. We're very excited about what's going on in the graph world. This is opening up a whole nother dimension for us and what we can do. And uh, this partnership and alliances, uh, uh, we're looking for big things in 2017, 18, and beyond. Yeah, and I think you know the complexity of data in, a, in an organization um, is huge. I mean, if you look at uh, all the systems that are there from reports to ETLs to core systems to databases, and then you have your, your conceptual models, your logical models, your physical models, uh, and, and then you have the regulations, it's a pretty complex uh, nice. uh, web, and I, I think most uh, chief data officers are really looking for this type of solution to untangle this. 
And I really appreciate your insights today. Thank you for coming Thank in. Thank you so much. It was a real pleasure.